Retro rifles are really coming into style recently, which is something that I personally really love. Things like M16A1s, CAR-15 clones, um, all of those kinds of things are just becoming really popular, which is awesome because those are all really cool. But some of the features that we have on modern rifles are really nice. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to look at what you could do to modernize your retro rifle while still holding true to the original features, themes, and ideas. Basically, what I want to know is what can we do to make this rifle from the 60s, 70s, or 80s hold up in a modern context? Now, I have to give a disclaimer first, and that is that your rifle will not hold up in a modern context, even if it, even if it is the nicest thing on the market, the newest thing on the market, if you are not a capable shooter. So before you go and start blaming your retro rifle for your inability to hit things or inability to hit things quickly, you may need to work on your own threat assessment, sight alignment, sight picture, trigger control, all of those kinds of things that make a shooter accurate. Once the shooter is capable, the rifle will also be capable. Usually when we talk about duty or use rifles, people say that your rifle should have three things that are modern. That is a sling, a rifle, and an optic. And I'm going to add a fourth thing that is particularly important for retro rifles, and that is a reliable magazine. Now there are some small adjustments that we can make to give us these features without taking away the core of what makes these rifles these rifles. I'm going to be using my M16A1 as an example, and we're going to be talking about some of the things that are on here in just a second. But first we're going to talk about a sandbox. A sandbox is a concept where you have multiple walls, and as long as you stay inside of those parameters and accomplish your goal, your goal will be successful. So for this type of project, or if you want to make your retro rifle more modern and more usable, these are the four things that I think it needs. The first thing that I want to try to do is to keep the all-purpose nature of the AR-15 rifles. Now, AR-15s are meant to be able to engage at close distances, at long distances, uh, decently long, maybe 500 yards at most, and anywhere in between. In other words, you don't want to add something to the front of your gun that makes it so that uh, the weight is off balance and you can't use it for long-range accuracy. However, on the flip side of that, you also don't want to put an optic that is so big on your rifle uh, that it takes away its use as a close range rifle. Secondly, everything that we do should increase the functionality. I don't want to add something to my rifle that because it looks cool or um, something like that, unless it helps it fit in more with the retro concept, like if it is uh, making a clone rifle and it's more clone correct. But I don't want to add bits and bobs just because bits and bobs are modern if the bits and bobs don't actually increase the functionality of the rifle itself. The third thing is we want to be faithful to the retro look. One of the easiest things that I could do to make this rifle more modern is replace the handguard with a Magpul handguard and then you could attach all sorts of bits and bobs to it. However, I don't want to do that because a part of what makes this rifle uh, so unique is the triangle shaped handguards that came on the A1. So as much as it is possible and as much as it is within my budget, I'm going to try to keep this rifle looking and feeling and behaving like a retro rifle. The fourth and final rule is no permanent modifications. I don't want to do anything to this rifle that can't be undone or can't take it back to its original form. So for example, if I did decide to swap out the handguards, uh, I could always replace the handguards again and put the old ones back on. I don't want to do anything that I can't undo easily. So let's talk about slings. This is my other AR and I have what I think is a relatively modern sling on it. Uh, there is a QD sling swivel. You can swap it to the other side really easily. If you put it on, the sling goes on top of your body and it's padded. Usually when people talk about modern slings, what they mean is that it is, it is comfortable and it's padded. You could carry it for a long time and it wouldn't cause problems. It connects at the top of the stock, which means that you can take it from low ready up high, drop it, grab it quickly and come up, anything like that, and it stays in front of you. It's not in the way like some older slings can be in certain situations. And QD is really popular, a quick detach. So this one has uh, this kind of QD mount where you can unhook it there and hook it here. Let's say you wanted to switch arms, um, then you could have this on your left side and do that. Sometimes people will have QD mounts that are right here. That's what these two holes are for. I just don't have the mounts that go there. There can be QD mounts on this point of the handguard or up here. This is not the most modern rifle, but for the sake of the sling, it shows the point. So. For a modern sling, you want it to be padded, which means that it's comfortable. You want it to be mounted at the top of the stock so you can carry it in front of you and leave it there without your hands on it. You want it to be not in the way. And fourth, which is not important to me necessarily, is you want it to be able to detach quickly. So let's look at my M16 and some of the things that I have done to make it fit that role. I have a padded strap at the top of the stock 
and it's not in the way, it's the exact same way that my other sling was attached. So I think it's really comfortable. It's not necessarily quick detach, but you can pull this off right here so that you can separate the upper and the lower easily without having them be connected. So this means that if my rifle is down in front of me, no hands, still stays in front of me, and then when I need to, pull it up and line up my sights. Now let's get this down on the table and look at some ways that you can increase your sling's functionality in a modern context. You'll have to forgive the dirty table. I cleaned a pistol on it and some of the oil got on it and haven't managed to clean it out yet. Now, there are three ways that I can think of to mount this type of sling over the top of this stock without perma permanently modifying it. The first one is with a tool like this. Now, this is just an under alert thing from Amazon. Uh, I think it was like $12 for a two pack and I had it on there for a little bit, but I took it off and I'll explain why in a second. The way that this works is you slide it open and you put it through the sling swivel on the bottom, wrap it around, make sure the buckle is where you want it, and then however it fits on your stock, you put it on the Velcro and that holds it in place. And you can tighten that pretty darn tight and it holds pretty secure. This buckle that the actual sling is supposed to go on is made of metal, although this one is plastic. Now the sling I use on this rifle I believe is an M60 sling. And I like that because it maintains the retro look and because it's an originally issued component. Um, so it's just kind of neat to have on there. I used this originally, but one of the things that I didn't like about it personally was it was just really bulky, especially having this buckle near the top, or it was actually on the side, but having this all right here where there is several layers of fabric near the top, it just kind of didn't feel comfortable to get my neck and cheek and face around it, especially if I didn't actually have the sling on, which there would be certain contexts where you might not have the sling around you, but you might still want to have the sling attached. So what I ended up doing instead was this M60 sling just had a whole lot of extra strap, um, probably more than many slings would. So I would recommend using one of these slings for this purpose if it's something that you desire. Um, so I just wrapped that around the stock and then made sure that there was enough slack that it fit comfortably where I wanted it. So you can see it's just wrapped around the stock through the sling swivel right there. On this side, you can see the buckle is right here. And then I just had it coming out of the bottom right there, out the back, and then my shoulder goes right here, right inside this space. Now for both this device and the sling, uh, the way that I found it easiest to attach was to undo the screw that is in the bottom right here because it holds the sling, sling swivel in place. And it also holds the sling swivel a little bit further from the stock than if it's not there at all. So I removed the sling, tightened it as much as I could, and then pulled the sling swivel out and put that screw back in so that it was as tight as possible around there. Right now I just have the excess sling wrapped around right here. Um, I don't think that that is going to come out with normal use, but I'll just need to take it out to the range, fire it a few times, and then we'll figure that out. The other thing is something I saw recently in a video with Grand Thumb and administrative results. And what they did was they had paracord wrapped around the sling swivel down here and going up, and then they just used 100 mile per hour tape and wrapped it around the outside of the stock that held it in place. 100 mile per hour tape is just a different term for duct tape. This is the 100 mile per hour tape that I've used on parts of this rifle. It is Nashua brand, or Nashua, I'm not really quite sure how to say it. Uh, and the reason I use it is because it is the proper OD green that this rifle would have had if it was in Vietnam. You can see some old pictures and videos of soldiers actually using this and then wrapping it around different parts of the rifle for various reasons. So if I was going to do that paracord trick, I would use Nashua OD green duct tape. So that is the back of the stock and sling. Let's look at the front. Personally, as of right now, I just have my sling on the sling swivel because I think that works. However, you will see some people putting it on the gas block right here. In fact, you can see some old pictures and videos of GIs doing this in Vietnam. So this is another trick you'll sometimes see people do. They put it around that part of the gas block right there and it stays in place well. Now, I guess I could foresee the possibility that the sling would get in the way of the front sight, but that's not something that I've experienced in the few times that I've tried this. It seems like it's secure enough that it's not gonna ride up that far. I've heard of people just doing this directly and I've also heard of people wrapping paracord around this area and then attaching this with a little clip to the paracord itself rather than just wrapping it around the gas block. Another thing that you could do is use that same strap from earlier and wrap it around right here. Um, this is not something that I'm going to do personally because I don't really like the bulk and because if you try to take the rifle apart, you actually need to take the strap off before you can really get it apart well. Um, I just think it's more trouble than it's worth and I wouldn't really want to mount my rifle sling right here anyway. This is a position that some people would want to mount it though, so I wanted to show you that this is possible. Maybe someday I'll find a rifle where I want to use this little thing, but this rifle is not it. 
The method I'm choosing in the front, at least for right now, is just having the sling around the sling swivel. So what I like about this sling setup is that I have a comfortable padded sling around the top of the stock and that doesn't get in the way because it's just a two point. So this is part one in the series of making my M16A1, or really any retro rifle, more functional in a modern context. I'm curious for your thoughts on this project. Do you think that it's reasonable or do you think that it's just ridiculous and silly to buy a retro rifle just to modernize it and make it function more like a modern rifle? In any case, I'm looking at making my M16A1 fit in more as a modern rifle and I lived on. Which proves it's hard to get the best of a man named John. Name John.